on. All right, so check it out. My name is Patrick Sweeney. I am a former Army Ranger. I guess I'm still technically an Army Ranger, right? Um, I was in 3rd Ranger Battalion from 2005 to 2009, and I've since been active duty for years. Um, I, uh, I was enlisted 11 Bravo Grunt Infantryman, and then uh, now I'm a military intelligence officer. Bottom line is, I know some shit, and I'm going to share it, right? So our house has survival kits. We have 24-hour survival kits we use for hiking, go out and about inside the wilderness, and then we have 48-hour kits and 72-hour kits, and then this is like a 72-hour plus, almost 96-hour kit. So a lot of people are talking about survival these days, and like what all it is that exactly that you need in order to be able to, to uh, take care of yourself. Well... I am. I have a family with multiple girls. There's one of them that's hiding out over there. I've got. A, I got a three year old, a one year old, and I've got a wife. Right. So I get. I've got a life that I actually live, and I wanted to have make sure I'm as prepared as I possibly can be. I live in Orange County, California. Who knows what the hell's going to happen here? Am I thinking insurrection, zombie, zombie apocalypse, Chinese invasion? No, not so much. I'm thinking like just preparedness, right? So I have different kits and different scenarios for different types of things, right? I have stuff that's in my house, extra water, food, stuff that like realistically, if you're going to have some type of a scenario, that's the stuff that, that you're going to use, right? And then I have, you know, an extra Jack Daniels, things of that nature, right? And then I also have like extra, I have a kit, right? I've got a, this right here that we're going to show is my 72-hour kit and, uh, and actually my wife's 24-hour hiking kit. So we're going to kind of go over all this stuff, why I have it and the functionality. Now, got it. Everyone's different. Everybody's going to have their own thing. Everybody's going to say, oh, you're forgetting this, or oh, that's not necessary, or oh, that's stupid. I don't care, right? At the end of the day, like, I know how to survive just fine. I got it. I've been trained well, and plus I've done it. So the, the bottom line is this will get it done for you, okay? This right here is what you need to be able to survive comfortably without having to worry about too much stuff, right? Can you add to this? Yes. Can you take away from it? Yes. Here's, here, here's the, the factors that surround this, right? The 24-hour the kit that, that, that's in the back here that we're going to go over, that's, that's for my wife to carry, right? So it's got to be within a weight limit that she can easily move around. And the 76-plus, 72-plus hour kit here, right, all this stuff, is it, which is retained in this bag here, right? The goal of it overall is that it all fits in there, and then it has to be able to, it fits on the bottom shelf in our garage, she has to be able to grab it and put it in the back of the car in the event that I'm not there, right? So it has a weight restriction and a size restriction. So bottom line is she has to be able to grab the kit and go with it, right? So it's all built within certain considerations, okay? So could you add more stuff? Yes. Could you take away stuff? Yes. The only thing that's not shown here is a kit for my kids, right? Which I have a whole separate kit for my kids. Bottom line is I'm going to break this down into four separate segments, right? There's a 24-hour kit I'm going to talk about, and I'll talk about that fast, right? And then the other three segments is going to be clothing, essential items, right? Survival clothing type items, right? Then there's tools, right? Your tools are, are along the back there. Things that I think that I need to have in order to feel comfortable being able to be without any type of modern accessory or basically being out on your own, right? And then lastly, you have your, your health and fitness type items, right? You have your, your survivability stuff as in your food, your water, your medical supplies. This is just basic on all levels, right? But it's enough that's going to sustain you for a hot minute, up to 72 hours plus, you know, in any type of an outdoor arena, right? So, let's get at it, right? Start out first with <laughs> section A, clothing, survival items, right? So, I'm going to bring you around here. We'll start out here, here at the top corner, right? I've got a, I got a set of BDUs up here at the top, so set my drink down for a second. Set of BDUs. These are the old ones that we used to use back in the day. Um, it, the bottom line is you need a long sleeve, short sleeve, all weather top and bottom, right? Something that's not heavyweight, not meat or not lightweight, but it's going to be right in between, so you can move to the woods if you need to, right? Is the functionality of it isn't really like military survival. It's more just something that you can have. It's going to protect you from the sun and protect you from other elements, right? On the same note, you need something that's going to be a little bit thicker, right? These are actually PCUs. So it's something that the Army issued for personal combat, combat uniform, but they're, they're weather resistant, they're nice, they're lightweight, they dry fast, but they're also great in the snow, right? So you want something a little bit heavier. So you have your base layer, you have your little bit heavier layer. This is your external wear stuff, okay? And then you have stuff for your wife, right? For me, so when we go over 24 hour stuff for my wife, you'll, you'll understand that the 24 hour stuff builds into the 72. You don't just grab a 72 hour bag. 
the, set, the 24 hour bag is situated directly next to it. You grab it off the shelf and you bring them both at the same time. Because her bag builds into my bag. My bag has trauma stuff. Her bag has field, field dressing, you know. My bag has, has um, additional cold weather gear. Her bag has base weather gear. So it just kind of plays off itself. So you have, you know, additional sports bra, um, thicker pants, an additional cha change of, uh, of, of undergarments if needed. Then you have your shirts, right? So basic shirts, some shirts are just a little bit smaller for me, but almost universal, right? So she could wear, wear, wear them if needed, right? So we got about uh, five shirts here, just t-shirts. You want to change those out because you're going to sweat through layers, right? Depending on what climate you're in. But bottom line is if, you're not, if you don't have the ability to wash clothes, you want to be able to change out your undergarment clothes as much as possible because that's what's going to kind of keep, keep, keep you in the fight for as long as you can. And then socks, right? I've only got five pairs of socks here. One lightweight pair for my wife because... Let's face it, she doesn't wear socks and sync up socks the way that, that, that I do. But actually, the, these two are designed for her and these two are designed for me. Socks are important. You want to ro rotate them as much as possible. It's just like the undershirts, right? So if you're going to have a layer, you're going to ro rotate as much as possible. It's whatever's closest to your body. So it's going to be your undershirts and your socks. If you go commando, go commando. If not, I, I recommend you have ra ranger pants or something like this that's going to help you out in the long run. Right? Belts. Belt, belt, belts are huge. So you lose weight quite pretty fast if you're not actually eating full regular meals. So have a belt of your own, otherwise it can really make things very inconvenient, especially when you start carrying a lot of stuff in your pockets. Also, have a belt for your wife or whoever else that you're building this kit for, because uh, more than likely by the end of this, let's face it, they're gonna end up wearing your shit. All right, so then we got we move on to the next thing. This is a survival mind. You get this on Amazon. It, any any one really. I mean, it doesn't. I'm, I'm not picky about them, right? It's just your basic survival blanket. And um, the goal of this is twofold, right? It's a, it's a impromptu shelter if needed, but it also is your warmth. If you plan on living extended periods of time in a in a two dollar survival blanket, we have background music now. Thanks, Bella. So if you plan on on uh, living extended periods of time in a survival blanket, you're wrong, right? This is more designed for quick fix and also basically it's a thermal and it's rain it's rain rain protection, right? So you need to have something like this just to take into account that there's extremes within the environment and you might need to cuddle up, right? So this is kind of one of those things that seems lame, but I would I would consider it essential to every survival plan. You have a hygiene kit. This is made out of a uh, actually a Stardust or a uh, um, red, red Star cluster. Um, box so most people probably won't have this but the, but the baseline of it is got a couple of hygiene it, it, it's a hygiene kit it's got what a guy needs basically a little bit of extra plus up stuff for your wife or whatever but it's got a, a, all the essentials to take care of your, high, your your hygiene for roughly a week i got two toothbrushes in there so whatever else it is you really need the cool thing about this is it's waterproof it's kind of a cool little container and um it, it, it fits real easily down into something, so it makes it basically very uh, compact, right? Next, we'll move on to this, right? So when we talk about clothing, it doesn't matter if you have a million articles of clothing, right? Or if you have two articles of clothing. Bottom line is, what matters is, are they waterproofed? Because if you can keep stuff protected from the elements, you can keep it, right? It, you can use it as, as long as you want to. Most people forget that, right? They get a trash bag, a garbage bag, whatever. Get a wet weather bag or some device that keeps your stuff dry. Now, you don't, do I need to dry all this? No. Most, 90% of everything you see here does not need to be waterproof. It is literally the clothing here that needs to be waterproof. So you waterproof it in order to ensure that in the long run, right, you have the clothing you need to sustain life. Because I'm telling you, when you come to a normal situation, most people start losing their shit when they get wet and cold. Right, so to prevent that, have a wet weather bag. It can do a lot of really awesome stuff, but the baseline of it is it keeps your essentials dry. Okay, keep moving on. Okay, number one thing I would recommend having, and I would buy surplus from the U.S. Army because U.S. Army does not got has not gotten a lot of things right. But what it has gotten right is it's designed this. This is a poncho, right? Wet weather poncho. Right now the hood's tied, but normally it would just slip over your hood, your head. It would be like a you know, uh, it's, it's a poncho. It kind of looks like a, you know, forever lazy or snuggy type thing for the Army. It is probably the most essential piece of equipment the Army's ever designed next to a poncho liner. But unfortunately, the poncho liner didn't make her cut from the survival kit, probably because it's stuck up in my bed right now. So, but I'll tell you this. This poncho, this thing has survived everything from cold range to, you know, Afghanistan and Iraq. So, it can keep you warm in the cold by wrapping up in it because it's waterproof. 100% waterproof. 
It can be your shelter, it can be your blanket, it can be your big wax site, it can be anything you need it to be. This thing is more essential than any other piece of equipment here, hands down. You can survive any, almost any climate for extended periods of time with just this piece of equipment. So get a poncho, include it inside, inside your kit. It's what you're going to make your shelter out of, it's what you can make your, your, your bivouac site or your uh, sleeping bag out of. It's, it's get one, get one. All right, so a hat, right? Some type of a head garment, absolutely essential. Traps key, keeps things going. Does it have that American flag and be from like Old Navy, Old Navy, wherever I got this thing? No, it doesn't matter. It's a hat, right? It's gotta be a hat that, that goes on, on your head and protects you from elements. That's all it is, right? The end of the day, you need to make sure that no matter what, you're able to protect your face and your, and your body, right? Your, all of your extremities from, from exposure, right? From the sun, from the elements, whatever it is. Hat is essential in that process, okay? Here's a, a wet weather top, right? This is your, your actual rainproof top here. And uh, this would go over whatever other layer you have. So this is to add heat, warmth, but also just to keep you from the annoying rain. Will you survive without it? Yes. Is it essential? No. Is it kind of important to your overall morale and well-being? Yeah, I would make sure I had that. All right, we have different layers, varying layers of cold weather gear. So we've got a thicker layer, we've got a couple lighter layers, layers of, of just waffle gear, right? I don't think you need anything other than just the lightweight pants, right? Because, well, I live in California, so bottom line. Um, but it, depending on, on your own respective climate, they, these are, are going to do fine for you, right? And really, a lot of the time, that's going to be if that gets wet, right? So if your essential stuff gets wet um, by wearing it, whatever it is, you put it on at night. That gives you the ability to, hu to, hu to huddle up in your little poncho, go to sleep, and survive, right? And then you got kind of like your medium layer and then your lightweight layer. And then you can escalate it by tackling on your heavier weight layer. And then boom, your full wet weather layer. And that's how the army works. It's a layering system, right? And then uh, we, we talked about the t-shirts. So this is your baseline, right? This is what I would have in any 72-hour plus survival kit just for clothing alone. And this would be added on to, again, which we'll talk about with the 24-hour kit. So to me, as one human, as one, as one adult with... with Probably me and my wife take care of ourselves, and I have a separate kit for the kids alone that's supposed to fit inside of this one eventually. Uh, but for two people, I think this is enough equipment to fit inside of a 72 plus hour kit that's going to get you moving forward in the field. All right, so I guess we move forward. Let's move forward.